What is up, you guys? Welcome to another edition of Controversial Thoughts. When this episode releases on Friday of this week, I will be on a plane somewhere over the Atlantic Ocean, maybe over Africa, on my way to Tanzania uh, and potentially Uganda for a few weeks to spend time with some of the last remaining hunter-gatherers on the planet, the Hadza and other tribes like the Maasai, the Datoga, the Chaga, some of whom have adopted more pastoralist ways, some of whom are at the border of an intersection or an integration into Western society. So it's going to be a really fascinating experience. I'm really excited to hang out with the Hadza, especially to go hunting with them. There's lots of videos that I've seen about them. There's lots of books I've read about them, all of which kind of point to the same thing, that they really favor meat and organs. They eat some plant foods with regard to plant toxicity spectrums, spectra. And I'm just excited to spend time with them in person and really understand how they view the world, what they prioritize, how they really find joy, what they like to do in their lives, what are the most important things for them and how they eat and live and why they make the food choices that they do from their perspective evolutionarily. Many people believe that this, this culture, this group of the Hadza and perhaps the San further south in South Africa and Botswana and or Namibia are some of the most direct descendants of our original Homo sapien ancestors. Homo sapiens, as you all know, if you've read my book and listened to other stuff I've done, is a species that probably is 350 to 500,000 years old, whereas other hominids go back two to four million years. So our direct ancestors are potentially from this exact region of Africa that I'm going, the Lake Iasi region at the base of Mount Kilimanjaro. But as I'm traveling, I thought it would be interesting to talk a little bit about how I maintain my animal-based diet while I'm traveling. So I spoke about this in a newsletter that I um, released earlier this week. If you're not subscribed to my newsletter, do it. Go to heartandsoil.co. You can put your email in there. I send out little short daily emails with things that I find interesting, music I like, books I like, poetry I like, and stories. It's fun for me to be able to tell my story, to share stories with you guys that you may have never heard about my experiences, whether it's PCT, whether it's a girl telling me I was too skinny, and that really was one of the things that sparked me to stop a vegan diet 13 years ago. Um, greatest failures, successes, uh, how I got a stress fracture, multiple stress fractures when I was in college as a runner because I was eating too many oats and lots of phytic acid and basically too many of these uh, lectin type molecules that were chelating the minerals I needed to have strong bones. So these are the stories that I want to tell through this newsletter. And one of the things that I talked about was how I travel and maintain an animal-based diet. There are lots of adventures to be had in this life and I don't want to be stuck in Austin, although there could be worse places to be stuck for the rest of my life. So how do I do it? So as I'm leaving today for a trip to Dulles, to DC for a day, and then I'm going to Africa, um, I wanted to share with you guys how I think about this. So the two biggest hacks that I found for traveling are traveling with a stainless steel pan and an induction cooktop. And I'll show you guys both of those on Amazon. I don't get any commissions from these. These are just links on Amazon. You can check them out if you want. But one of the hardest things for a lot of people is they're not gonna stay in a hotel with a suite, with a place to cook, with a way to cook. And so having an induction cooktop really solves this problem. Regardless of where I'm going, I'm a geek. I travel with a stainless steel pan because I don't like showing it up at, up at Airbnbs, even if they do have a kitchen and it's full of PTFE coated um, Cookware. I don't want to cook on stuff that has Teflon and other synthetics for nonstick for a variety of reasons. I want to use stainless steel cookware and not everybody has stainless steel cookware in their Airbnb. So I just got back from some mountain adventures in Montana and Utah. And you better believe that I took a stainless steel pan with me and it came in very handy. So this is an example of a stainless steel pan any of these will do. It's a great thing to travel with. You can get whatever size you want. And it's nice to know that I'm always going to have, um, I'm always going to have this degree of ability to cook on something that I really trust and believe in. And here is the cooktop that I think is amazing. Um, this one is pretty darn small and it travels really easily. Um, unfortunately, it's out of stock till February 16th, but there are other cooktops on Amazon that are similar to this. And you can plug this into an outlet in a, any hotel room, 
use your stainless steel pan and cook a steak or whatever you want in the pan in the hotel room. It's pretty easy. So it really is an awesome hack. The other thing I do when I get to places I'm traveling is I go to the grocery store and I just buy meat. So I'll go to Whole Foods or whatever upscale grocery store is there that I believe may have grass-fed meat. I believe in that. I eat that as much as possible. Um, if I can't get it, I can't get it. But I want to eat grass-fed meat as much as possible for reasons that I've spoken about in the past. The really simple reason is that I think that if you are grain feeding an animal, it's going to accumulate more toxins that are on the grains. It's going to accumulate more pesticides, it's going to accumulate more problems from the lower quality food it gets at the end of its life. So I'm eating an animal that's eating a species appropriate diet, like I talk about with humans, and I want to um, eat the cleanest meat that I can. And I believe that grass fed, grass finished, preferentially re regeneratively raised meat is going to be the cleanest meat. It's not going to have as much glyphosate, if any, less dioxins, et cetera things that grain finished meat may accumulate from moldy grains, mycotoxins, glyphosate sprayed grains, et cetera. So that's what I'll say about that. If, an, if a grocery store has organs, you bet I'll get some liver. They're probably not going to have much more than that, which is where traveling with things like we make it hard in soil, uh, the desiccated organ supplements comes in super handy. So take in beef organs, histamine and immune, and gut and digestion to Africa with me. And these will be my organs when I can't get them. I sure hope that we are successful in our hunts with the Hadza and that I can eat some animals nose to tail. But I believe that one of the awesome things about freeze-dried desiccated organ supplements like we make at Hardened Soil is that this allows people to travel much easily. And I will let you guys know that when this video comes out, histamine and immune is now back in stock. So we have a full store at Hardened Soil Super excited to reincorporate this one back into my diet because of the lung and the thymus. As many of you know, uh, and I've spoken about a lot, I am now recovered from coronavirus, from COVID. It was a really mild course for me. It wasn't a big deal. It was probably three days of mild congestion and a little bit of a cough. And then I felt normal again. And I quarantined uh, for the asked amount of time, for the required amount of time. And now I have a negative test and it's good to travel. So it's nice to know that I'm through it. It was mild for me. I'm metabolically healthy. I've spoken about that a lot in previous videos. But in the previous videos, the points that I was making were that you should know your visceral fat level. You should know your fasting insulin and you should know your 25 hydroxy vitamin D as a baseline of your metabolic health. And I think that if they're not ideal, hopefully that will help trigger um, lifestyle changes that will improve your overall health. So thinking about histamine and immune, this one's really cool. So this histamine and immune has lung, liver, thymus, spleen, and kidney. And particularly thymus is interesting to me in the time of coronavirus. I mentioned this article in a previous newsletter. Again, if you're not subscribed, I, I really try and deliver value and laughs and kind of comedic relief with my own stories. Um, but I talked about this in a previous newsletter, which you can subscribe to at heartandsoil.co. But check this out. So in Wuhan, they actually used a peptide, thymus and alpha-1, found in thymus in people with severe coronavirus. So they had 76 cases of severe coronavirus admitted to two hospitals in Wuhan from December 2019 to March 2020. And they found that compared with the untreated group, the thymus and alpha-1 group significantly reduced the mortality of severe COVID-19 patients, 11.1% versus 30% with a p-value that was significant. Thymus and alpha-1 enhanced blood T-cell numbers in COVID-19 patients with severe lymphocytopenia, which means low lymphocytes in the blood. Under such conditions, thymus and alpha-1 also successfully restored CD8 positive and CD4 positive T-cell numbers in elderly patients. How cool is that? Meanwhile, thymus and alpha-1 reduced PD-1 and lymphocytopenia and ac acute exhaustion of T-cells, um, excuse me, uh, reduced PD-1 and TIM-3 expression on CD8 positive T-cells from severe COVID-19 patients compared with untreated cases. It is of note that restoration of lymphocytopenia and acute T-cell exhaustion uh, were roughly paralleled to the rise in T-Rex, which is um, a certain subset of T-cells. So the T-cell receptor exclusion circles, as they say up here. So very cool to see that peptides found in organs 
improve the immune system response to viruses. This is something we've known for a long time. This is one of the reasons that I believe in organ foods strongly, whether it's the peptides found in spleen, splenin, splenopentin, tuftsin, the peptides found in liver, the peptides found in um, stomach and intestine, like uh, you know, the BPC-157 or the peptides found in immunomilk like hepatocyte growth factor, which have been shown to repair leaky gut in experiments. And so organs are powerful for humans. For millions of years, we've been eating these things. The Hadza definitely eat them. Traditional cultures eat them. And there are benefits of these that we're just beginning to learn way beyond vitamins and minerals. So even if we can put the nutritional information of organs on the label, um, which is quite nutritionally valuable in terms of B vitamins, minerals, all these type of things, it's not even going to encompass the values of these organs. So histamine and immune has thymus, which has TA1. There's never been a study in the US with this, but in China, it definitely looks like this could be beneficial for humans. So I've now recovered from COVID, but as I'm traveling, why not have more support for my immune system, no matter what I'm going to encounter with some thymus in the histamine and immune. I'm also taking the gut and digestion because it's gonna have stomach and tripe, stomach and or tripe, and intestines along with liver and other organs. I would imagine that when I'm traveling, I'm going to have some exposure to things that my stomach and intestines don't usually see. And uh, it is my hope that peptides and nutrients in there will support my intestines and GI tract when they experience foreign stuff. And I like beef organs as kind of an overall multivitamin um, with heart, liver, kidney, spleen, and pancreas. So those are the supplements I'm going to take while I'm traveling. I like to have my diet be very simple while I'm traveling. I'm going to try and eat as much meat and basically the desiccated organ supplements as I can. I'm bringing some salt that I like, which is Maldon salt. Uh, and I'm going to be bringing hopefully a little bit of tallow. Fat is a little hard when you travel. So sometimes you bring your own fat if you can't, then having some carbohydrates in your diet is absolutely essential. I'll be eating honey. There's a lot of local honey in Africa, and that'll probably be my diet for the next three weeks. And that's okay because that's pretty similar to my normal diet, which have you, if you get my newsletter, you know, is meat, organs, honey, sometimes dates and occasional other fruits. And that's about it. I like having a simple diet. I feel really good with that diet. I can incorporate more fruits, but if I found that if I do too many different fruits, I start getting more gas and I don't feel as good. So that basic diet is pretty darn similar to a carnivore diet, but I love the idea of an animal-based diet that allows a little more freedom and a spectrum of plant toxicity. We just got done with the animal base 30 at Hardened Soil. And there was an in, there's an infographic that will be that we gave out through that challenge. We're gonna do another one. So look for that in the future. If you guys wanna get that infographic, you can always shoot me an email, Dr. Paul, Dr. Paul at heartandsoil.co. It's a whole infographic on how to eat animal-based. But that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to focus on meat and having the desiccated organs. I'm going to travel, not to Africa, but in general, when I go to Dulles, when I go to DC, I'm going to be staying in a hotel room. I'm going to be traveling with this cooktop and my stainless steel pan. And that makes it so much more doable, a simple diet that allows me to feel good when I'm traveling and also not limit me in terms of my adventures and where I'm going. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, in terms of how I travel with an animal-based diet. I think that's a stumbling block for a lot of people. And I really strongly believe that you don't need to compromise the quality of your diet when you're traveling, if you have these few things. So, all right, guys, I am going to Africa. Stay tuned for stories and all sorts of things that I will share with you when I get back. And while I'm there, my socials may be a little bit spotty over the next few weeks because I'm going to be freaking running around the bush with the Hadza probably with a loincloth on. Maybe we'll get some photos. We'll see. That's a joke, mostly, maybe half joke, but stay radical, stay metabolically healthy, and I love you all.